Hi everyone. So I've just finished the chassis and I've got a couple more to do. Um, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to do a couple of videos on um, assembling the chassis for those that have bought the chassis flat pack or are interested in it. Uh, just try and make a few things a bit clearer. Uh, so the first thing to do is there's a couple of areas that um, require captive nuts fitting. The first one is on the back of this plate which goes along the very back of the car and also we need some on the underside of these plates which go to uh, form the gearbox mount. So I've got some plain M10 nuts make a simple jig with a bolt Then weld them on. So do that on all, on the other plate and on both ends of the thick five mil plate that goes across the back of the chassis. And then we'll move on to the next bit. So there we are. Captive nuts installed. Next thing we want are the 60 by 40 tubes. Um, which make up the horse collar section at the rear of the chassis. And also T1009. There's two of those. And the T1 010 the left and right tubes okay so the first step is to get these four tubes which are H1004 and H1005 they uh, jigsaw together Looks like so long as you're working on a flat table, you, you're fine. And then just tack those together. So just tack on each of the four corners so that they're reasonably strong. Okay, the next point, next part to make is the lower part of the rear. These are all T1 tube numbers, T1009, T110, and this is T110L and another 009. thing to be careful of uh, actually on all of the tubes is that depending on the angle and the way that the lasers cut them it may just leave some tiny little nicks um, that interfere with each other so this fits together nicely but it's actually slightly more than 90 degrees just because they're holding each other off so in that case you've got to just um, brush them off with a file or an angle grinder 
so that they sit perfectly at 90. That's just relieved the little pips that were interfering. And now we've got a good 90 degree joint. few strong tacks just to hold it. And then we have the basis for the rear of the chassis. All right, so to complete this little area, I'm just gonna use this gash piece of tube as a, as a jig to keep it in line. So if just clamp. done that to make sure that the front edge is straight. We've got this T1050 tube that goes in the front to join the two together and then the plate with the captive nuts goes across the back and that's it. Just going to clamp this to the block to make sure it stays flat. in that cross tube. There we go, that's that tacked up. Now we want to check that when we release the clamp, it is actually 
true in parallel. The way to do that is to do some diagonal measurements with a tape measure. So there we go, we have 587 millimetres on one side and 587 millimetres on the other side. So that's the benefit of laser cutting things. They're, machine, they're made with a tolerance of plus or minus 0.1 millimetres and the way that they socket together uh, everything so long as you're reasonably sensible without how you actually fit it together and clamp it and stuff. Um, you know it's going to be pretty much uh, cock on. You're really looking for nothing more than a millimetre or two um, diagonal difference across any of the uh, sections that you weld together, especially when you're tacking. When you start hitting it with lots of heat and fully welding it, then there's a chance that certain of the long tubes, um, the way they're made, and the amount of heat that you put in might move a little bit more, but it should be pretty rigid by the time you get to that stage. So you shouldn't really be seeing more than a millimetre or two of a difference in your diagonal measurements. So last bit for this section would be to put the two gearbox mounts on. You can do this later if you want, but they tend to pretty much find their own position. Um, because the holes are cut such that the nuts find, the, find themselves centralised and there's enough uh, give in the rubber mounts to take account of the millimetre or so difference that there might be. Uh, you'll notice it's not going down flat, so what I tend to do um, is either clamp it or hit it with a hammer such that you deform that around the weld. Okay, so that's got the uh, mounts clamped in position, just weld those on. And that's that bit done. Now you can put that to one side and come back to that later uh, when we get to the next bit. I'm putting up the chassis and making it a bit more three-dimensional. So there's a couple more sub-assembly sub bits we can do before we need to get to that point. Okay, so the last subsection on this rear horse collar part of the chassis is uh, to make up this brace bar goes across the top of it, holds the two sides together, goes across the top of the gearbox. Uh, it's H1, 001, 02, 03, um, and 06, the parts that you need. So I'm making up a little, uh, just a little support jig, because it's a little bit rattly, and we need to make sure it's flat and square. There we go, fit it together, finally. Um, now what I'd like to do is clamp this up. Thank you. So look, just 
Now that it's flat and square. Assembly bits done. Um, and the next video we'll complete this one, we'll make it a 3D section that we can put to one side and come back to once we've laid out uh, the other flat areas of the chassis later on. Thanks.